Hello, so we are going to try this Power Query challenge. This LinkedIn account, this guy, he posts challenges every Saturday and Sunday. They're usually quite interesting, good way to kind of practice your Power Query skills. Um, and this video is going to be my solution to this particular problem. So in each challenge, there is a link. I have already opened the link, it's here. And what I normally do is just copy the source table and the expected output into a new Excel file and then take a look at what needs to be done. So in this example, uh, the top row here is the same as this row. So no change there. But this row has got five hours, two X's here in sub two and three. And in the output, we've got two rows with an X in each row, sub two and three. And the hours have been divided by the count of rows. And just to confirm that is actually what we're doing here. On this row, we've got six hours and three X's, subs one, two, and four. And that is transformed into these three rows where there are two hours in each row, subs one, two, and four. So the output has a single X on each row and the hours for each row have been divided by the count of X's in that group. So let's just do it. Uh, it's actually not that bad. So I've selected the top table and I'm using data from table range. Click OK, open the Power Query Editor. And first things first, get rid of this change type step. So the first thing to do is to get the number of rows. So we need to create rows per X, rows per X. So let's select these and transform unpivot columns and that has created one row per X. But the problem is is that the hours are not divided by the count of rows so this should be 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. So to do that we can just use group by to count the rows and we can use advanced and count the rows by name and date. Count That's already count rows so we click OK and now we've got two rows for Sander on January the 2nd. So the next step needs to put this count or use this count in this unpivoted table. So to do that, um, I'm going to go into the code editor and add a step where I'm going to join them together. And I'm going to call it join and use table join. And I'm going to join unpivoted columns on name and date to grouped rows on name, if I could type it would help, and date. And make that my output. So that's joined. So now I've got this count here. I can divide the hours by the count on each row. And I can do that by just quickly adding a custom column. I'll call it new hours. Why did I press escape? I didn't need to do that custom column, let's try again. Let's call it new hours. And we want to divide the hours by the count. That gives us 2.5. So now we can get rid of control, select, right click, remove to get rid of those. Move the new hours over there, press F2 to rename. Try again, keep pressing escape out of habit. Okay, so now to get this attribute back on the column headers, we would use pivot, but if I if I use pivot straight away, you'll see what happens. I'll just show you. If I use pivot, and let's say I want to use the values column, the value column as the values column, and don't aggregate. Unfortunately, it creates one row per name date because these three non-pivoted fields are they're the same values in both rows. So we end up with two X's and we're back where we started. So that's no good. The way to avoid that very quickly is to just duplicate the attribute column and keep one of them um, unpivoted while we pivot the other. So if we right click and duplicate and then we select the attribute copy and pivot the column, the value column is the values column and advanced options we don't aggregate. So that creates one row per X with the X's in the right sub column. We just, all that remains is to just get rid of this attribute. And that's it, that's finished. 
So just to check it, I would use close and load to from the home tab. Um, and we're going to load it onto an existing worksheet and next to the expected output. And the reason I do that is so that I can very quickly do an equality check between them to make sure that what I've done is what was expected. And if they're all true, then they're the same and it worked. So that's that. You should try these challenges. It's a good way to practice your Power Query skills. That's the end of the video.